we are brought low in our need. We come to you in this time of worship, for our spirits are poured out like water, and there is no one to heal our pain. Do not remain unmoved when the scoffers say, Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Help us, O oh God, of our salvation, and come speedily to us once more, that all may see your glory. And no word of truth will come to us. Amen. Please be seated. Welcome to Worship at Fletcher's Chapel this morning, both in person and online. We're grateful for you joining us this morning and being a part of our community of faith. If you're online, we invite you to check in on Facebook uh, or send us an email. Let us know that you're joining in with us. Also, we uh, welcome any guests that we have here this morning and invite you to fill out one of the welcome cards that is in the pew wraps and place them in the, the collection plate. A uh, couple of a couple, uh, quick announcements. I won't, won't list all the announcements every Sunday, but this morning I wanted to remind you that uh, Tuesday night, September 20th, uh, is an opportunity to uh, be a part of the United Methodist Men's host, uh, who are hosting a Love, Learn, and Lead webinar that will be focusing on Heart Havens, one of the mission projects of the Virginia uh, Conference. And uh, as far as I know, we are the only conference that has such a mission program where we actually have houses that have been established to help those who are uh, mentally disabled but who can live uh, uh, without having to be in an institution. They need a little bit of help. They need someone who can be there 24-7 if, if needed. Uh, and, and oftentimes can't live at home uh, in part because of aging parents or other situations where they're just not able to live at home anymore. Uh, this is a program that, that gives these people a chance to live semi-independently and also uh, have a chance to live um, in a, a, a more comforting home-like environment even if they cannot live with their, their own families anymore. So if you'd like to be a part of that, you can join, um, you can uh, register and join the webinar or you can wait until it's posted on the conference website and at uh, www.baumc.org and then go to the United Methodist Men's section and there they have the, the uh, webinars that they've been doing over the last year and a half are archived there. A big thing here at our church is next Saturday, um, less than a week away, when there's supposed to be fabulous fall-like weather, sunny, not too warm in the 70s, we're having our fish fry. Uh, so great weather predicted at this point for our fish fry that would be from 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, at the church pavilion. We probably still need food, Tina. Yeah, there's a, a clipboard going around somewhere that has things to sign up for. Okay. So we're looking for you to continue to pass that clipboard even through worship. Yeah. <laughs> we want to make sure everyone has an opportunity to sign up. Um, and uh, are there other uh, kinds of help that's needed? Kenny, do you know of anything that's um, specific? Before we get together at 8 o'clock Saturday morning, uh, we'll be peeling a potatoes and some mm -hmm. onions and stuff. And we'll, so we'll have fried potatoes later on. Um, so if anybody wants to come out about 8 o'clock Saturday morning, we'll mm -hmm. have it. So Saturday, Saturday morning, morning, 8 o'clock, the church kids can help morning. you take us some onions. Um, and anything else? Wasn't there something else earlier in the week that you needed to do for the fish fry? Grass cutting or something? Grass cutting. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we're going to be cutting the grass out of the ball field and stuff. Probably either Wednesday or Thursday, one of the meetings. Um, but if anybody wants to come out, I guess we'll shoot for Wednesday, um, probably about 4.30. 4.30 at the ball field for helping you cut grass, bring whatever tools you have. Okay. Anything else? Anything else with the fish fry? Okay. And then um, our Mission Rivers Lane, uh, our Mission Rivers District, which is the new name of our new combined district, the old Rappahannock District, uh, they're leading lay servant training this fall. 
and there's an insert in your bulletin that has more information, including where to go to register on the back in red. Um, they, this is for anyone who has considered being a lay servant in the church or would like to learn more information or improve their skills. If you are a lay servant uh, and you want to be certified, then you have to conduct uh, certain courses. You have to, to do certain courses each year to keep your certification up and fill out a form and turn it into me before annual conference. They will give you the form, but I can also give a copy of that to you if you're a lay servant and need the form. Uh, the insert list all of the courses from the basic class to the advanced classes that are being offered, the dates and times. I do believe all of these are being done online, um, so please be aware of that. And if you're interested, sign up if you'd like to know more about the lay servant program, please speak to me after the service or sometime during the week, give me a call and I'll be glad to tell you more about it. Are there other announcements for this morning? Yes. Prayer list. Prayer list, yes. I was going to do that a little bit later, but I can do that now. We are making some, I uh, want to remind you that we have a, a card that is in the P-Rex. There's some more at the back. There's a jar at the back. If you have a prayer request, You'll either get it to Debbie or to me in hand or in that jar, then we will print the names in the bulletin. But we'd like to have it in writing so that we make sure that we have the names correct before we put that in the bulletin. You can also mark on there that you don't want it in the bulletin and give us a prayer request that you may even just want the pastor to see. That's fine. Um, and that gives you some other options on that form. So if you would like to add somebody to the printed prayer list, we'll still ask for joys and concerns during that time, but if you'd like to have it on the printed list, please be sure to fill out that card. Anything else on that? Does that cover it? If you have any questions, please see Debbie or me after the service. Also, if you've got names on the prayer list, and it's no longer an emergent need, um, something that someone that can come off of the prayer list, please let Debbie know, and she will keep that refreshed and updated. Uh, you know, I've been in some churches where the only way to get off the prayer list was to die. <laughs> <laughs> and people did not want to be put on the prayer list because the only way to get off the prayer list is to die. We don't want that. Uh, we want you to keep, help us to keep that list refreshed. Anything else? Yes. Um, also, if, if a prayer request comes up during the week, to be sure to call you or me and let us know so that they can yes. go on the prayer chain as so well. So they can go on the prayer chain as well. Yes, please do let us know. During the week, if there's an emergent need, we can go ahead and get that prayer request out. That also uh, gives me a heads up when there's a need for pastoral care. I can follow up on it uh, immediately if there is a need. Anything else? Then as we prepare to hear the scriptures read and proclaimed today, will you please join me in prayer? Lord, open our hearts and our minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, that we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Please turn in your hymnal to page 801 for Psalm 80. I invite you to stand as you are able in body or in spirit as we read together responsibly. This morning we will um, use response too. If you'd like to join in reading the response with me wherever the, the uh, R is, um, I will try to remember not to miss one this morning. I invite you to join with me in the response. The God of Abraham prays. All uh, praise be God's name, who was and is and is to be, and still the same. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth in the presence of Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up your might 
and come to save us. Restore us, O God, and let your face shine that we may be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You and have fed them with the bright of tears, and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us the scorn of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. The God of Abraham prays, all praise to God's name, who was and is and is to be and still the same. You brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. It took deep root and filled the land. The mountains were covered with its shade, the mighty cedars with its branches. It sent out its branches to the sea and its shoots to the river. Why then have you broken down its walls so that all who pass along the way pluck its fruit? The boar from the forest ravages it, and all that move in the field feed on it. The God of Abraham praised, all praise be God's name, who was and is and is to be, and still the same. Turn again, O God of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Have regard for this vine, the stock of which your right hand has planted. They have burned it with fire, they have cut it down. May they perish at the rebuke of your countenance. But let your hand be upon those of your right hand, the ones whom you have made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life, and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine, that we may be saved. The God of Abraham prays, all praise be God's name, who was and is and is to be and still the same. Our hymn this morning is, This is my song, hymn number 437. <laughs>
22, 1 through 7. chapter 2, verse 1 through 7, on page 1783. Instructions on worship. I urge, then, first of all, that requests, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior who wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all men the testimony given in its proper time. And for this purpose, I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying, and a teacher of the truth to the Gentiles. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading this morning is from Luke chapter 16, verses 1 through 13. It can be found in your Pew Bible on page 1574. Hear the words recorded in the Gospel of Luke as we hear the parable of the dishonor, honest manager. Then Jesus said to his disciples, there was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, what is this that I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, what will I do now that my master is taking the position away from me? I am not strong enough to beg, and I am ashamed to beg. I've decided what to do so that when I am dismissed as a manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, how much do you owe my master? And he answered, a hundred jugs of olive oil. And he said to him, take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it fifty. And then he asked another, how much do you owe? And he replied, a hundred containers of wheat. And he said to him, take your bill, and make it eighty. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a very little is, uh, is faithful also in much. And whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust you the, the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters. For a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, Lord, 
our rock and our redeemer. Amen. How many of you who have been working have had to go through self-evaluation uh, at work? How many of you in school have had to take tests and maybe even had to do your own evaluation as to whether you deserved a good grade or not? I remember at least one of my high school teachers uh, came down to the last week of the, the term and she said, you have to write a paragraph on what grades you should be getting and why. And turn it in. And if I agree with it, that's your grade. No matter what you did during the course, you tell me what grades you think you deserve and why. What is the criteria that you use for evaluation? If you're doing an evaluation of your subordinates, you might use one set of criteria, another with your coworkers or your bosses. How would they evaluate your work? How hard are we on ourselves? Or how often do we overlook our own faults? We had a parable this morning where Jesus is specifically talking to his disciples. And he is talking in this particular story about an owner who asked his manager for an accounting. He'd been hearing from people in the community that the manager had been stealing from him that he'd been requesting more than what the owner asked in return for the fields that they were raising. The rents were padded, you might say. The manager was skimming off the top. And he was planning to fire him based on those evaluations he was receiving from other people throughout the community. Now, for all the wrong reasons, the manager decides to mend his ways. He realizes that he has few options if he's fired from that job. And that only that the people that he's been cheating are only going to hire him for the most menial of work, which he does not want to do. And there are so many things that he does not have the skills to do. And so he decides to readjust what the different people owe him. And so he calls all of the tenants together and says, it's time to pay your rents. It's time to, to pay the owner for the land that you have been using. And then he asked each one how much they had been told that they owe. Now remember, he sets the amount that they owe. He's been telling them, he's been padding the figure. And then he reduces what they owe by his padded amount. So it looks like they're getting a bargain. And in doing so, he figures he's making friends. So when he gets kicked out and loses his job, he can go around and say, remember, I, I cut your, your rate down. I took 20% off the top or 30% off of what you owed this year. So, welcome me to your table, won't you? He's doing it for the wrong reasons. But the owner commends the manager for recognizing that he now has to make changes, that his behavior can't continue the way it has, and that he needs to do something different, and that he needs to work not on just padding his own pocket, but building up his own relationships because it doesn't matter in the end how much gold and silver you have pouring out of your pockets. If no one will sell you anything, and if you have no friends, and if you have no place to go. It doesn't matter how much money you have if nobody will do business with you, if nobody will give you the time of day, if no one will share a table with you. It's about relationship in this earth. It's about how we treat and are treated. It's about who we know and how we deal with those individuals. 
can't tell you how many people I've known who said that they burned their bridges and almost immediately regretted how they treated other people and that they could no longer go back home because they treated everyone so poorly. That in their older years they were lost and alone because they had no friends, no family who would have anything to do with them. It's about relationship on this earth. And Jesus tells us this again and again and again. Each of you is made in God's image. And when I mistreat you or you mistreat each other, then you're mistreating God. And so Jesus is reminding the disciples of this as he tells us this parable. And he ends with a statement about being faithful with, with those who are, are faithful with little or faithful with much. One master, not two, can be served. And when you are all about the financial gain and not about the relationships with each other and with Jesus Christ and with God, then you're serving the wrong master. You're serving the master of greed. And you can only serve God or greed, but not both. So today we're talking not so much about what he did with the monies once he received it. It wasn't about how he invested it or even how much he gave back in worship. Because the manager was not in charge of investing or reinvesting the money or even spending it only in collecting it. It was the owner who was in charge of investing well and of giving his money to God. Only money that the manager needed to worry with giving to God was what he received as his pay. And we all know that the, the scriptures tell us from the very beginnings of the Old Testament that we are, are supposed to give the first 10% of whatever we receive back to God. The first 10% of whatever we harvest is God's. And that our offerings come on top of what we first tithe, that 10%. But that's not what this parable is about today. It's about the stewardship of ourselves and the resources that we have. How we use our time, where we put our attention, how we build our relationships with other people, how we interact with our bosses and our coworkers, our teachers and our students, our clients. It's about our moral compass. And what we internally think is right or wrong. Did the steward think he had done anything wrong? by knowing that he was supposed to get 75 bushels from this person and instead telling them that they owed 100 or that he was supposed to get 80 gallons of, of olive oil from this person and say, no, you must give me at least 95? Not at first. He thought that was perfectly right until he faced losing his job, faced a choice. And then he had to think about what he was doing and why he was doing it. Only after he had received the monies and then been praised by his manager, by, I mean by his owner, by the owner of the lands, the manager had to think about what he done, why he done it. Because it's ultimately about our relationship with God. We're faced with choices every day. We must choose where is our focus. What are we doing and why are we doing it? Are we doing it to honor God or out of greed? We must make a commitment and stick with it. Nancy Dunham, Dunham tells the story of how an enormously rich man complained to a psychiatrist that despite his great wealth, which enabled him to have whatever he wanted, he still felt miserable. The psychiatrist took the man to the window overlooking the street and asked, what do you see out there? The man replied, I see women and children and men. The psychiatrist took the man over to stand in front of a mirror and asked, now what do you see? The man said, I see only myself. The psychiatrist then said, in the window there is glass and in the mirror there is glass. And when you look through the glass of the window, you see others 
But when you look into the glass of the mirror, you see only yourself. The reason for this, said the psychiatrist, is that behind the glass in the mirror is a layer of silver. When silver is added, you cease to see others. You only see yourself. Whenever your devotion to money and material things causes you to be self-centered, you in essence deny God's intention for your life, Matthew Dunham says. It is also a denial of Christ. For Jesus came into the world so that we might be in union with God. So the manager had to look past himself. And he had to look past himself before he could be a good manager. He was too self-interested, too focused on his own wealth, even as he began to negotiate with the debtors. It was about being welcomed into their homes, after losing his job, not about helping them and doing what was right. And that is often the problem in our world today. <coughs> we need, excuse me, we need a change of perspective because even as we strive to live out Jesus' teaching to take care of one another, it is often more about what we think we will get out of it than it is about being good stewards on this earth. Robert McClellan says that the grace of God is like the man who went into the clothing store to buy a suit and was shown a blue one. No, the customer said, that won't do. I want a green suit. So the clerk called out to his partner, turn on the green light, Joe. This man wants a green suit. <laughs> it is not that things are changed, but that we see them differently. In Christ, we are given spectacles which give us a kingdom perspective. We see ourselves in a heavenly light through God's eyes. We see how things really are. We need no longer suffer from the stigma that sinner, forgiven or otherwise, denotes. We can see ourselves as heirs. With Christ and the divine inheritance, the world does not change, but we see it and ourselves in a new light, a new kingdom that the parable today enables us to look at ourselves through a heavenly light, to evaluate what we're doing, how we're doing it, and why we're doing it. When we do that self-evaluation, we have to ask ourselves, using what, uh, what have we used wisely and to serve God? Are we using our skills and our abilities and other resources to show love for God and God's creation? Are we using our resources in worship and praise of God? Or are we using them to help us get something, by some, be someone other than a good disciple, a strong and honest manager, one who is devoted to God? Or are we challenging ourselves? Are we challenging ourselves to use our abilities, our time, our intellect, our joy to build strong relationships? with each other and to be in service to God's children. But look at the extremely long list of what a pastor's responsibilities are in our book of, of discipline in our journal for the United, uh, Virginia United Methodist Conference. And all that I'm supposed to do for the church, I fall greatly short. Most of us fall short of what the Bible says that we are to do as faithful disciples. But Jesus tells us and teaches us to focus, to focus on being right in heart and mind so that we can open ourselves to doing what God asks of each of us. To focus on loving our neighbors first, of putting others before ourselves, to not building up our stores and rewards on this earth just to be building them up, but to use wisely what we have in love and with grace. To use our talents, our skills, our resources God has given us to glorify God. And then we begin living faithfully by praying, by picking an issue uh, and a person with whom you're having a problem to focus on, to pray to God for a specific path, to change one thing, just one thing, in our lives. 
that will draw us closer to God. Most of us can choose one activity that we can begin this week that will eventually make a worldwide difference. Bill Gates and Warren Buffett chose a few years ago to challenge other very rich people, the one percenters, to give money to improve the world, to help build up uh, vaccine stores, uh, of, of being able to take the vaccines to people who in third world countries couldn't otherwise receive them or afford them, of uh, putting money into research to try to take care of some of the, the diseases that are out there that could be cured, including cancer, of helping uh, countries become more self-sufficient by improving uh, whatever is needed, like water in many of these communities, fresh water. Another person decided to decrease the number of straws that were ending up in the ocean, and he began a, uh, a, a challenge for us to stop using disposable plastic <coughs> straws all the time especially in our own homes. So, so now you can go into many different stores and buy reusable stores in their own little pouch to carry with you. And you find more and more restaurants are using um, compostable st uh, straws, straws that are made out of a plastic like <coughs> substance, but they, they degrade quickly after they are tossed into a landfill. Or paper straws, which have gotten much better to help to stop having so much plastic end up in our oceans. One thing, one thing that they focused on, and we've already started to see this worldwide <coughs> change because of one person and one issue and one thing that they chose to do to make this a better place. So this week I challenge you to choose one thing one thing that you can do to improve your life and your relationship with God. One thing that might help other people to experience the kingdom of God on this earth. It might be to choose to forgive someone or to start rebuilding a relationship or to build a relationship with somebody that you don't have one with right now. Be a good and faithful servant. Choose God. In the name of the loving parent, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we respond to hearing the word this morning, I invite you to stand as you are able and join me in the affirmation of faith found on page 883. Today we are using a statement of faith the United Church of Canada. That's one of our sister Methodist churches. Please stand as you are able to divide your own spirit. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, God, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church. To celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life and in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen.
you can still email Debbie, and the information is in your bulletin so that you can uh, see the, the full announcement and so that you can reach out to her and let her know um, the information that is on that pew card if you would please send that to her. Now we come to our time of, of joys and concerns, and I believe that today is somebody's birthday, maybe Gunner. Is today's Gunner's birthday? Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Can we sing happy birthday to you? Yeah. <laughs> My sister Sissy, who's actually been here several times, um, she lost her job this week, so she's um, praying that God will bless her with a new job, and also she's having some dental problems, so if you could keep her in your prayers, I'd appreciate it. So that's, uh -huh. and your sister Sissy, uh -huh. um, and Sissy lost her job and has had dental issues. Yeah. Okay. All right. And I see you hand it here. Yeah. Uh, prayers for my aunt Rose, who's currently in hospital in South Carolina. What was her name again? Barbara. Okay. And I uh, see three hands over here, so we'll start at the back and move okay. forward. Um, first, for my um, aunt still struggling with um, having strokes, and they can't really figure out um, why, but uh, so she's still in the hospital. She's still in the hospital. Okay. All right. Okay, next to Roe coming forward. Yeah. Uh, my aunt Judy Parks. Judy Parks. Oh my goodness. So for you and your family in the death of your aunt Judy. Yes. You said cancer? Interstitial lung disease. Interst uh, lung disease. Can't get that other word out right now. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't feel like my tongue's going to work on that one. We'll work on that. Thank you. Uh, Debbie. Joe. Keep Joe in mind. <laughs> Joe. Joe Donovan. Yeah, Joe Donovan. He hasn't been to church in almost two months now. Anyone else? Any other joys this morning? I think it's joy to see all of you here. And I thought it was joy when I saw the weather forecast this morning for the next eight days because it looks beautiful um, over the next eight days. Some um, blessed relief from the heat that we've had. Amen. <laughs> and I always say amen and, and, and a, a prayer of thanksgiving whenever we have a church outdoor function scheduled, and the weather forecast eight days out says that it's going to be in the low to mid 70s and sunny. Because you can't ask for better than that when you're doing an outdoor event. Are there any other joys or concerns? Then let us pray. Oh God, we come together today to pray to you and to worship you. You've heard us look up several needs and concerns of members of this church family, some who are grieving, some who need healing, and some who need encouragement and help. You amaze us at every turn. Help us to see how you answer prayers in the world around us and in our own lives. 
As we experience new things that confound us and make us wonder, we realize just how unfathomable your mystery truly is. We call you God. It is a name that represents for us what we consider to be a primary attribute of your divine reality, namely your goodness. At every turn, we see evidence of your goodness in the world around us. Many times it comes from things that we would judge to be not good. We still desire to be found in your good graces. We still continue to seek you as you continually call us. We give thanks that you work through the creative imagination, through even the wildest imagining and seemingly inappropriate means. And so we know that there are times where we may be thoroughly discouraged by present conditions, personal or public. And we pray that we may be open to possibilities for change. And we continue to lift up those who cannot yet believe you, that they may have new faith, and that in your wisdom they may use what is now to create what can be. And so we pray to you this day, asking you to help us and to reassure us daily of your love. And so we practice as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. One of the things that I love about God is that he always calls us together to eat. And this coming week, we have the opportunity to not only come together as a congregation, but as a community and invite others to the Lord's table as we have our fish fry. What better food for us as Christians to offer to feed people fish and invite people to come? And so I invite you to invite people to come to our fish fry on Friday, I mean Saturday. But we must also do the right preparations for that. Even Jesus seemed to have 12 disciples with 12 baskets available when he was feeding fish to a large group of people. So I invite you to be sure to practice some of your discipleship this week by being available to help with some of the preparations, whether that be side dishes or whether it be helping with uh, desserts or cutting grass or peeling potatoes and onions or any of the other things that we need to do to set up for our fish fry, including inviting people. People don't come unless they are invited. We have other ways of being involved in discipleship this week, including spending time in prayer, of taking a few minutes to call people who are not in church this week and to say we missed you. Even if you know where they are and why they're not here, a simple text or a simple message saying we missed you. You don't have to give them a guilt trip, just say we missed you. It can go a long way. And then there's always supporting our congregation with our tithes and our offerings. So will our ushers please come? <laughs>
this offering shows such wisdom, that having been found faithful in a little, you will trust us to be faithful in much. We offer you these gifts in gratitude for your love, that they may bring healing and light to those who need your balm in Gilead. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing forth in thy name, hymn number 438 is our closing hymn. Amen.